So we look at Detroit in, in 2020 and we kind of look at where we need to go in the next 10 years and the Detroit Regional Chamber just had kind of a state of the region report come out. What are you seeing in terms of maybe specific policy initiatives or some different things we need to start to focus on to get Detroit in the region to the places that we want to be now in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, Christy, you have just crystallized the entire question that this conference is really focused on. We had this tremendous decade that just passed, right? Look at what's happened to the region and the state, it's been tremendous. How do we make that same kind of progress over the next decade? And I think we have to solve some fundamental problems. We have to solve a transit problem. We have to solve an education problem. We have to solve a opportunity for all problem. Because you know we're seeing great success in some parts of our communities. Other parts of our communities, we haven't made the progress we need to make. So we have some fundamental challenges before us that we have to solve before we can have another great decade. Okay, but those aren't easy challenges to solve, and it's going to take policy, it's going to take money. So where are we seeing in terms of funding, and where are we seeing in terms of threshold for pain for policymakers in Lansing to be able to start to change things? Well, first of all, I, 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 you know, it's news to me that it's going to be hard. I was hoping we could solve these things by next Tuesday, but okay, fine. I like fine. to point those things out. <laughs> so, number one is that communities and regions need to look within themselves first mm -hmm. and start solving the problems they can internally. One of the things that we can do here in the Detroit region is start solving this uh, transit problem. You know, we can do a better job of making our communities more welcoming, more friendly to millennials and, and people mm -hmm. from, from outside the region to move in here. Those are things that we can do internally. Yes, we need to look to Lansing. In some cases, we need to even look to Washington, D.C., but let's start where we have an impact first before we start looking to others to help us. All right, so let's talk about education though, which is another specific, um, I think, policy challenge that we have in terms of what kind of funding, how we break up that funding for different yeah. districts, and what we're concentrating on as a whole in education. Where do you see some of the change that needs to be made? So there's a couple things. Of course, there's a statewide coalition called Launch Michigan, which I'm proud to serve on the steering committee for. And one of the fundamental things that we have said at the outset is, is that we need to ensure that there's not equal funding, but equity funding. And that really acknowledges that different students coming from different backgrounds in different places need a different level of funding. Because you know, uh, a student coming out of you know, my school district in Gross Point has a different set of advantages and has a different set of needs than someone right. coming out of, of, out of another neighborhood. And until we fix that disparity gap, we're still going to have a social mobility problem because we need people who are in underserved communities, those children, to have the same opportunities of students coming out of a wealthier district. So it seems to get that same drumbeat of education uh, because what are companies telling you when they're looking at Michigan or specifically Southeast Michigan to either invest in, to move a company to? Yeah. Is that still a sticking point in terms of what our education averages are, our test scores, or the amount of people that have a college education? or that talent and workforce that's available here. Yeah, so you know what businesses are telling us is that there's a war for talent and talent won, right? You know, you know, companies are losing the battle for talent every day. And it doesn't matter what kind of business, they're losing the war for talent because the available talent pool people with a, the right four-year degree or the right two-year associate's degree or the right skilled certificate, right? You don't have to have a four-year degree to be successful today and tomorrow, but you need some sort of advanced training and that needs to continue. Companies don't have the pool out there to draw from. And, you know, the region with the best talent is going to win this war because if our companies don't have the access to talent that they need to succeed today and tomorrow, they're gonna start moving operations to other parts of the country or the world that have that talent base. We have had some good news though in terms of investment from General Motors, Ford, and from FCA. Does that help in terms of attracting other business there saying, look, you've got these corporations that are rebuilding and manufacturing and this is a good place to be able to do it? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a multifold question actually. So yes, absolutely, especially when you think about mobility jobs, mm -hmm. the spin-off, the jobs created based on one job in the mobility industry is one of the highest of any industry out there. In fact, it might be the highest. So that's a tremendous economic boost to our region and to the state of Michigan. The other thing is that you, when you look at the investments, especially like this GM investment in Hamtramck, mm -hmm. it's about next generation mobility jobs. It's about electrification. It's about autonomous driving. And that is going to bring yeah. talent from not just other parts of the country, other parts of the world that want to be part of this mobility revolution that Detroit has the opportunity to lead. 
So a little more concentration on tech and taking advantage of what we have in our backyard and also looking right. at Ann Arbor and things that they're doing there as well in the tech companies. Yeah, when you look at you know, what I call you know, this, this technology corridor that we're building, downtown Detroit, the Ford Corktown facility, mm -hmm. the Ford headquarters, American Center for Mobility, University of Michigan, M-City. This is a great technology corridor that could be the leading technology corridor for next generation mobility in the world if we play our cards right. So that's interesting. So if we play our cards right, give me a little crystal ball prognosis here when we look at what we will be talking about in five years from now with the possibilities that we can take this region in. What are you, what's your prognostication here? So first of all, we need to ensure that again, we're building the town. So that means that you know, all these nodes that I just talked about, you know, the up and down that corridor, there's the talent to fill those jobs. The second thing is, I mentioned it earlier, regional transit. How are we going to get people from downtown Detroit to Dearborn or from Dearborn to the uh, American Center for Mobility? You know, how is that all going to occur? Because if we still have to get into, you know, our Chevy Equinoxes or our Ford Fusions and drive around to all these places, yeah. you know, it's not going to be the next generation mobility corridor that we deserve. All right, Sandy, um, it's funny when we look back at where Detroit was, it's been a hell of a decade. Oh. I mean, from 2010 to 2020, and the amount of growth and the amount of change that's really happened here, it makes you think, oh my gosh, in 10 years, where we could be could be staggering. Well, I remember being on your show in, in 2010 and 2011, and we're talking about, you know, bankruptcy, and yeah. we're talking about, you know, you know, when are we going to kind of emerge from the recession, and kind of what's next, and, you know, we weren't even talking about next generation mobility. We weren't even talking about Detroit being a, a tech corridor. We were talking about keeping lights on. Exactly, and, and right. Essentially, and getting some tenants in buildings, right. you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, the downtown vacant, uh, the downtown occupancy rate in Detroit was like 65%. Mm -hmm. You know, now, now it's 99.2% like or something ridiculous like that. So this last decade, tremendous progress. But again, how do we make sure that this next decade coming up has an equal level, if not greater level of progress? Because we just can't look around in 2020 and kind of say, wow, that was great, you know, you, know, yeah. you know, time for a cocktail. Yeah, all right, well we can't wait to see what's next and we'll see you up at Mackinac, of course, Sandy. Great, thanks, Christine. Thanks.